sit. I start training the dogs to do scent work right away. As soon as I start teaching hold, all the objects are scented with bird scent. So this has bird scent on it. When I start teaching hold, I don't worry about what the dog's body language looks like because I know the end result is they're going to love doing scent work and retrieves. All of them learn this and all of them like it. Having the dog do scent work, even though it's a physical assist service dog just makes sense. It gives the owner an opportunity to do something more with their dog. I have several clients that take pheasant wings out in the backyard and then they have them hunt them up. That's a good way to train your dog. It, if you're so worried about your dog having fun, you're going to have a mess on your hands. We teach the dog what it likes and dislikes and we teach the dog how to play. Don't let your dog as a puppy run around eating mud and sticks and think that you're doing anything positive for the dog. This nonsense of like, I'm going to take the dog out and I'm going to get it real tired so then I can train it. What are you talking about? I see it all the time on the internet. It's a joke. It's a sign of somebody that believes positive reinforcement food training is positive for the dog. It's not. They're never going to get a handle on the dog. You pander to your dog like that, you're going to have a mess on your hands. Scent work, if you're teaching hold, you put scent on the objects. I'll give you a, an example of the scent that I use. This would be one of them. This is a scent stick. This is duck scent. And this is like chapstick, and you can put it on there, and it's... I have another one that's liquid, but the liquid one I inject into an object. This can go on the surface. It's like chapstick, so if it gets wet, it's not going to come off. There's many different scents you can use. I prefer using bird at first, but it, like I said, it doesn't matter. After they learn the one scent, the other scents are just like one session. There you go. It learns that scent. So it, it's, it's real simple. Scent your object so when you're teaching hold and you get the dog to the point where they really like doing it, they'll associate this with something that they like, you can start teaching them the hunt them up command. And we're not going to go into that today. This is really about like scenting the objects. So as Gus hold, as he learns this, and he knows that this is a good boy, this is something I want him to do, drop. He starts associating this with like something positive. This is a toy. It doesn't mean that I leave it on the ground. It's something I interact with the dog with. You never give the dog retrieving items, anything like that. You never leave them on the ground. You're a bad owner if you're doing that. You're just lazy. This is something that I would use with the dog, not the dog doesn't own it, I do. The other objects that we're going to start today would be a pheasant wing. And the cattle dog, I'll bring the cattle dog out here, probably will not want to do this. But it doesn't matter because I know the cattle dog in the end will love this. One thing about these pheasant wings, they are freeze dried. So if they get wet, your dog might start chewing on them. Don't use them when the wet, when the ground is wet. You don't want them to start chewing on it because you're not going to be able to stop it. Just because I do something doesn't mean that you're going to be able to do it. It's just a fact. It's done the same way as we start teaching the other objects. I just put it in the dog's mouth. I do not give them an option. So I put it in his mouth and say, hold, hold. This is a Labrador. So this is going to be much easier than the cattle dog. So see how he's accepting it right away. Drop. He loves it already. That wasn't a shock. Gus, hold. Drop. See? Now let me go get Toto and you'll see how a, a dog that isn't a retriever would respond with this. And I haven't tried that. I'm assuming she's not going to like it. And when I do this, I'm going to have her up on the table because we're still working on the table. So she's accustomed to a dumbbell. She won't be accustomed to this, but I don't care. It, does, it doesn't matter. I know what's best for the dog. The owner knows what's best for the dog. I cannot stress this enough. If you have a puppy and you're letting it run around, you really shouldn't have that dog. You have, you have these ideas that have been put in your head by purely positive reinforcement trainers 
that use food and it's nonsense. They're selling you garbage. They're telling you what you want to hear. Operant conditioning is about both the, the positive and the negative and the alleviation of both. It's not just about the positive. And we're talking about an animal that has this social structure and, and that, that's very important. So just to like say, well, I'll just give a positive. That's not the way it works. That's not the way the dog works. You're gonna end up with a mess on your hands. I've seen it a million times. You're working with a food trainer. There's a bunch of blue ribbons because they, their dog can like do an obstacle course, like a, an agility course. But then look at the dog. The dog barks incessantly or does whatever and they can't get the dog to shut up. Those dogs are a mess. Just because a dog can jump over a barrel doesn't mean that it's gonna be a good citizen in the human world. Toto's advancing quickly on hold, that's, that's for sure. And the object that she's holding pretty good is this object. Toto, where are you going? So, hold. Hold, no, hold, hold. Good girl, hold, 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 drop. So now we're gonna start you, and this is scented. This has grouse scent on it. I use any of the bird scents. She's smelling the pheasant wing in my back pocket, which is a good sign. Now, most of the time, I, well, 50% of the time, dogs reject this at first. It's just like a new object. They don't want to deal with it. She is sort of looking like she's interested in it, which is good. But this is not anything to chew on. And she does like the idea. So if you're training your puppy to do this and, and they don't want to do it and you're working hold already with the dumbbell, it's the same process. You keep putting it in the, the dog's mouth and then they start to get habituated to it and they get that muscle memory and they just see it as one more object that they like. And this will, this will be the object that we're gonna use to teach the hunt em up command. And from this object, we also will have her on the dummy launcher too. So, and Gus, so they'll, they'll also um, be habituated to the smell of gunpowder. They'll be totally used to that and they'll be looking at that as something positive. So it's the same process. Let's put it, I'll put this in her mouth and see if she rejects it. She might not. She might not. She might like this better than she likes the dumbbell. Hold. Hold. Drop. Now, one thing about this, that wasn't too bad, but you could see she was mouthing it a lot. Dogs don't like feathers in their mouth. They have to get accustomed to this. That's what that's what the problem is. It isn't the smell. It's it's the um, it's like this tactile quality to the to the feathers. It, it flips them out. They don't like it. Like if you got a hunting dog, you shoot a dove. The feathers are real loose. A lot of times they'll get the feathers in their mouth. They don't like that. It's it's not comfortable for them. They shouldn't be eating feathers. I know somebody that was trying to feed chickens like they killed chickens to the dog but they weren't plucking them so the dog was just like starving that just you know they're they they do not like that they don't like to eat feathers they're 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 um they may be protein but they're not a quality protein and they're going to come out undigested so that that's 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 a problem with dog food there will be feathers and stuff in there but the the feathers are ground up and stuff. It's not, it's not a good protein source. You want to use a good protein source. Okay, let's try it again. You ready, ready Snoopa? Okay. Hold. No, hold. Drop. No, drop. That's good. You want to try it again? Hold. No, hold. No, hold. Good, see your tail wagging? Hold, drop. Now, she's mouthing it a little bit. I'll put up with that some at first, even mouthing of the um, dumbbell or the, the, the doll ride. It, it, do, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter, you just want them to start looking at not rejecting it. Like if I had brought this out and she was like, 
doing that head turning shit again. That would have been a real bummer. But she's not. She's she's accustomed now to me putting the object in her mouth. And every object that she learns, we will backtrack and do this process. So when I want her to learn to pick up keys, I'll put I'll take the keys and I'll put them in her mouth and say hold. But we'll stick with this and the dumbbell for right now. Mo oh, she likes it. Sit. Okay, hold. Now hold. Hold. No, hold. No, hold. Hold. Drop. No, drop. Good girl. She'll get it. Let's do it one more time. I'm gonna put her in her mouth this way. Okay, ready? Sit. Okay, no, hold. No, hold. Hold. Drop. That's pretty good, sis. That's good. There's many different types of uh, scents you can buy. You'll find them on uh, sites like um, Gun Dogs Online or um, Lion Country Supply. They also have deer shed scent if you want to uh, train the dog to find deer shed. It doesn't, it doesn't matter the initial scent that you're using. It's not gonna make your, like, if you're like, oh, I'm just gonna use one scent to train the dog. That's, you know, and the dog's gonna be better at that, just one scent, that's not the way it works. That's not the way that it works. If your dog can do one scent, it can do five scents. And that's gonna help them be better. I'm not saying that at points you might set the dog up with, well, there's scents everywhere, so there's no reason to even use like a false scent. I guess maybe if you uh, were doing boxes with objects in them, maybe you would put a false scent in there, but there's false scents all over the yard. So we're not trying, we're not trying to do parlor tricks. What we're trying to do is train a dog proper. Um, this is invaluable to the dog and to the owner. This is a great way to work your dog and everybody should be working their dog, not letting the dog run around mindlessly and with that said if you have a puppy and you're, you're taking it to a park and let it run around on a leash without a leash you are an idiot if you let that puppy run around your house without a leash you are an idiot you're an idiot you're setting the stage for problems say your dog's three four months old another couple months it goes into the teenage months and you're still letting it do that you're not only an idiot, you're a bad owner. You're a, you're a bad owner. The only time a dog should be off leash is when it understands heel implicitly and you have it under control. Anything other than that, you're putting the dog in danger. Get bit, you know, get bit, uh, hit by a car. You could be out in the woods and it could see another animal that could hurt the dog. It's, it's not listening to you then you need to have it on a leash and you need to do leash work with the dog. And if you're teaching the dog hold, start teaching it scent work, of course. Don't be unrealistic. This is not a morph little human being. By the way, while we're on the subject, I, years ago I had somebody trying to tell me that dogs are animals so they know what not to eat. That's nonsense. Animals die in the woods all the time. It's a fact. And animals eat rat poison all the time. There's all kinds of plants that are very bad for your dog. If you are just letting the dog run around chewing on whatever, you're a bad owner. What do you want me to say? You let it chew on sticks, your dog's going to have anal gland problems. What, do you, what am I going to, what am I going to tell you what you want to hear? Then I wouldn't be doing my job now, would I? I'm not gonna tell you what you wanna hear. If, you, if, you, if you're looking for the dog trainer that's gonna tell you what you wanna hear, go go listen to Jack, Zach George or one of those other purely positive food trainers that just, that's what they're doing. They're telling you what, what you want to hear. 
You don't have to train the dog. It just needs to run around and get some exercise and then train the dog. Stop wasting your time. I don't even recommend with a dog that you walk it when it's young. You know what you do? You take it out, let it go to the bathroom, and then you start training right away. And 10 minutes of training is like equal to like 45 minutes of like the dog running around mindlessly. You're lazy. You might love the dog, but you're loving it the wrong way.